But first, there have been tributes to Tina Turner from across the music world and beyond. She overcame hardship and abuse to become an international superstar. Tina Turner was born Anna Mae Bullock in the small town of Nutbush, Tennessee. Her childhood was difficult. Her mother left when she was 11, and when her father remarried, she was sent to live with strictly religious grandparents. Anna Mae began singing in church, and as she recalled, on family outings too. At our picnics in the South, when we had barrels of lemonade and fried chicken, barbecue ribs and the whole bit, and there was a Mr Bootsy Whitelaw, that was the band. He played a trombone. And I forget the other musicians, but it was just him because it was... And he was very descriptive. And I was the singer. I was the dancer. I was up there, little anime. I, I don't know how old I was, but I was even singing then and dancing. After graduating from high school, she worked as a nurse. On an evening out at a nightclub, she first saw Ike Turner and his band. I thought he was the ugliest person I'd ever seen. I'd never seen anybody that skinny. But he had a presence. And then I watched him and he got on stage and he started, I thought, oh, wow, I want to sing with that man. He's got me smiling, but I should be ashamed. Anna Mae was determined to sing with Ike's band. She was 17 when she first got on stage and grabbed the mic. Well, who was there right there? Yank, give me that microphone. And I started to sing and Ike was like, I mean, he was literally shocked. For well, that sound to come out of this little girl that's been following him around, asking him if I could sing with him. And it was one of those really heavy blues. It was one of those, how do you call those swampy ones, da da. And this this young kid that had it in there. And I, yeah, 17 years old. And I got up there. I was perfectly at home. When I was a little girl, I had a problem wrong. Ike suggested she change her name to Tina Turner, and the couple were married in 1962. They toured with the Ike and Tina Turner Review and were invited to support the Rolling Stones. But by the mid-1970s, Ike was addicted to alcohol and cocaine and became increasingly overbearing and violent towards Tina. He knew already that I no longer cared about him and was paranoid about me leaving. He had already sensed that I was thinking of leaving. So that was the beginning of the end, yeah. the beginning of the violence and how evil he was. It was every day of every moment. Every now and then, it was some fun. Sometimes it was, but I don't remember what it was. But I remember there were days that was lighter and nicer. But mostly, he was just a really, really always angry with me. Oh, he treated me like I was a prisoner and he was the guard. After years of mental and physical abuse, Tina finally fled the relationship in 1976 with just a handful of loose change in her purse. The mind changed strength, believing in myself, determination, determined to get away from that because that was no life. Either die or move on to whatever is next and to believe that there is something better. Lee John from the band Imagination was a Tina Turner fan long before he was sitting alongside her on chat shows during the 1980s. He recalls seeing her live as she struggled to establish a solo career. We uh, came to see her at the Apollo Theatre in Shaftesbury Avenue. And I remember when we saw her at the Apollo, Mick Jagger was in the audience and David Bowie was in the audience when I saw Tina. And that was before she broke big you know, the second time around. She was a firepower on stage. You know, there's, there was nothing like her as a black female. As I said, a lot of people have learned a hell of a lot from her because normally in that time, black female singers or females generally were very stagnant. They'd stand by the mic. They'd be very slinky and seductive and sexy. But she could take on James Brown, you know? <laughs> that was a relative thing about her, or Wilson Pickett. She had that energy and, you know, came from the church, from the gospel roots, you know, in the South. And she took all that and put it on stage and presented it to us and gave it that strength. For a time, hits and larger audiences eluded Tina. But then, in 1983, her manager suggested she should team up with the English electro-pop group Heaven 17. Their recording process surprised her. They were sitting in the room and it looked like an x-ray machine that they slotted this thing into. That was the electric sound. It was all done with machines. It was like... Surgery was going on in a little opposite room, and I'm standing here singing. I tell you, I did the most fantastic vocal as well, because when I heard what they were doing, when we listened back, I felt, oh, 
this is huge, this arrangement. It's, it's like an orchestra in a strange kind of way. It was, it was wonderful, the experience of singing. Let's Stay Together was a big success, so Tina returned to the UK to record the album Private Dancer. Her potent blend of rock and soul sold millions of copies. I take great songs and turn them into rock and roll songs on stage. I don't really actually get rock and roll material because there's that, not that much good music out there. Because my performance is an energy on stage, I need that kind of music, so I just transform the music. Tina Turner is truly one of the greats. She'll be remembered for ever. Her music lives on and you are just magnetized by the spirit, the dynamic, the energy. She possesses a passion and so many of the young and up and coming artists will learn so much from her because she's left us with a truly strong legacy. You're simply the best. You know what I'm proud of? That at this age, my music doesn't sound old style. There's a, mu a musical that's a hit. So aside of being really tired of talking about myself, I'm really proud of what my future as a star became. I feel proud that I hold that in my hand. The music of Tina Turner, who's died aged 83.